Why salutations, motherfuckers, and bienvenue to this week's edition of Unsent und Fay. My name is Sam, and aujourd'hui we're exploring a place that is, and I'm gonna say it, the most French capital city in the world. The city of love itself, and the place that Kanye West and Jay-Z balled so hard in. Paris. Sacre bleu. May. What is so special about a particular Parisian pizza place? Why is doing this technically illegal? And if I saunter about Paris singing Fou de Fafa by Flight of the Concords, how far will I get? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so pack your things and get on the Eurostar, or a plane, or a bike, or something, whatever you do, make sure you like and subscribe, you know, while you're there and while you're here, as we go through 101 facts about Paris. Number one. So where did it all start? Well, when the Parisi, a Celtic tribe, settled on the banks of the Seine River in the 3rd century BC, little did they know that almost 2,000 years later, their tiny tribe would turn into a population of millions in the place we now call Paris. If you ignore the fact that globalisation and the rise and falls of several nations in between took part in the diverse culture that currently forms Paris. Number 2. Paris was originally a Roman city called Lutetia, once the Romans conquered it, that is. Is there anywhere the Romans didn't conquer? I guess that's a fact check for another day. That means midwater dwelling in Latin, by the way. Number 3. Anyway, during the Roman times, Lyon was the capital of France, but as time passed, so did the capital, and in 987 AD, Paris became the capital of France. Also, its name changed from Lutetia to Paris, but nobody really knows why that happened. Number 4. Speaking of historical stuff, around Montaigne Saint Genevieve in Paris is one of the oldest universities in France. It's the Sorbonne, which opened in the 13th century. Just so you don't get confused, by the way, the Sorbonne is also called the University of Paris. Number 5. During the Middle Ages, Paris began to experience rapid growth as it was experiencing more developments in the city beyond education. And then the Black Death hit, which by the way, if you don't know, was a disease that significantly reduced the population growth in Paris and lots of parts of the world. Number 6. In the 15th century, Paris was the largest city in Western Europe, however, it was under a lot of civil unrest. During these times, Joan of Arc, no relation to Noah by the way, played a huge role in fighting to defend Paris during the Hundred Years' War, which actually lasted for longer than a hundred years. Number 7. One of the most well-known battles in France started in Paris, and it's even got a painting to highlight one of its most important moments. Yes, that's right, it's the French Revolution. <laughs> This began in 1789, and that famous painting I mentioned is Eugène Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, which is an oil painting. Number 8. An important part of the French Revolution is that it's still celebrated now on Bastille Day. On July the 14th, 1789, a mob broke prisoners out of the Bastille prison fortress in Paris, which was the actual start of the French Revolution, leading to Bastille Day being an important symbol in Paris and throughout France. It's now celebrated with fireworks in France as a national holiday. Number 9. During the early 19th century, the French Empire expanded over Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Belgium, and more under the reign of a guy called Napoleon. Although actually, in 1814, the Russian army seized Paris from Napoleon. Number 10. The 20 arrondissements in Paris start at the heart of the city and continue in numerical order in a spiral fashion. For this reason, if you're ever lost, the safest thing to do is to keep following one route and you'll most likely eventually make it back to the heart of the city. All routes really do lead back to the Notre Dame. Number 11. Even though you can walk around Le Marais now, it used to be a complete swamp. Then in the 13th century the land was drained, and today it's a fully revitalised land of culture and life. Number 12. The Ile de la Cité and the Ile Saint-Louis are two natural islands on the River Seine in Paris, and they are also some of the oldest areas in the city. There are bridges to access them though, don't worry, you don't have to do a doggy paddle to get there or something. Number 13. Speaking of dogs and doggy and stuff, they love dogs in Paris, like, a lot. There are over 300,000 dogs there, that's one for every seven people. Number 14. If you love your cocktails, I'm sure you'd love to know that the first Bloody Mary was made in Paris. The bartender, Fernand Petio, mixed up equal parts of tomato juice and vodka and then, voila, the first Bloody Mary was served. It's funny because that sounds bloody awful as a recipe, but in practice, quite nice. Number 15. We all know that most countries on Earth have a lot of people who take up arms to serve their country in the army. When in France, the beings that live there are so devout, even pigeons have joined the army. The French army is the only one in Europe that still have carrier pigeons in its ranks. They started joining during the 1870-71 Franco-Prussian War and the Siege of Paris, and they've stayed ever since, although not the same ones, obviously. Number 16. Due to France's well-known penchant for fashion, it only makes sense that the French army was the first to use camouflage in 1915 in World War I. 
The main workshop for the creation of this clothing was in Paris, with over 200 experts in artistic concealment. Number 17. Paris Fashion Week is one of the most famous fashion shows in the world, and takes place biannually during February and September of each year. Well, that's very soon, I might have to attend one and show off all my moves on my clothes and stuff. Number 18. Not everyone likes the French sense for fashion. In fact, at the first official Paris Fashion Week in 1973, a fight broke out between American and Paris-based designers. Were they hitting each other with leather bags or something? I mean, that would hurt. Number 19. Most designers from France weren't born in Paris, however, they did set up their brands there. This goes for the like of Louis Vuitton, Dior, Cartier, Hermes, Chanel, and more names I just butchered. Number 20. Gare du Nord is the busiest railway station in Europe. Around 700,000 people pass through the station daily, and approximately 214.2 million passengers use the station every year. Number 21. Making the thing was no easy task. It took three years to build Gare du Nord, as it was developed between 1861 and 1864. This includes the nine beautiful statues inside the station, which are, I would say, worth having a gander at. Number 22. Ooh. Paris Metro, the tube or subway of the Parisian world if you like, is over a hundred years old now. It was opened in the year 1900, making it one of the oldest urban transit systems in the world. Number 23. The Paris Metro is among the world's longest metro or subway systems with a total length of 218 metres. Wow, that, that's not that long, is it? 200... Oh, 218 kilometres. That makes more sense, sacre bleu. Number 24. The Paris Metro consists of 16 lines and around 300 stations. Why 300? Because this is Paris. Oh wait, that was Sparta, wasn't it? I'm always getting those two confused. Number 25. If you fancy traveling way, way, way over the ground instead of under it, then good news for you. There are three airports in Paris, Rossi Charles de Gaulle in the north, Orly in the south, and Paris Beauvais Airport. Number 26. Rossi Charles de Gaulle is the main international airport for Paris and the second busiest airport in Europe after London Heathrow, with around 69 to 76 million passengers every year. Number 27. In Charles de Gaulle, the airport, not the man, Air France has the biggest capacity for passengers, therefore making it one of the most popular airlines in Paris. It has three terminals and opened in 1974. Number 28. Charles de Gaulle was planning to have a fourth terminal to allow handling of an additional 40 million passengers, however, this was stopped. Why? Well, France had apparently changed their transport's priorities, and were looking to develop more environmentally friendly electric and hydrogen fueled planes instead. Number 29. In 2004, a huge chunk of Terminal 2E at the Charles de Gaulle Airport came crashing down, killing several people in the process. This was indeed a tragic event, but the terminal has been redeveloped since then, and the structure has been improved. Number 30. You'd never guess what, the oldest terminal in Charles de Gaulle, it's Terminal 1. I know, right? It has four floors and seven lounges, so you're not too far from a cosy seat, as long as one of the millions of passengers hasn't taken one up. Number 31. Anyway, enough about this port of the air, Paris has a population of over 2 million people, which is actually way less than other capital cities like London. Still, it's the most populated city in France though, so well done. Number 32. By the by, people from Paris are known as Parisians or Parisiennes in French, so just so you're aware. Number 33. Paris has a number of streets named after presidents of the United States, like Rue Washington and Rue Lincoln. Also, since France were the ones that gave the USA the Statue of Liberty, they must really like America quite a bit. Number 34. There is only one stop sign in the whole of Paris. Wow, I wonder how many accents take place. Number 35. There are 6,100 streets in Paris. That's 6,100 places you could be robbed. The context for that's coming soon. Don't judge me too harshly yet. Number 36. There are 13,260 crossroads in Paris, so that's 13,260 opportunities for you to bone thugs and harmony. Get it? Because it doesn't matter. Number 37. Rue Gasnier Guy is the steepest street in Paris and is angled at 17.8 degrees. If you're bad at math or can't visualise that, the angle would look like that. So, you know, basically bring, you know, studded boots. Would that help? Number 38. The highest street in Paris is Rue de Telegraph, which is 128 metres above sea level, that's 420 feet. Fumer de la Gange to le jour. Number 39. Rue Vaugirard is the longest street in Paris and it's just over 4.3 kilometres. Sounds great if you're looking to train for a 5k, to be fair. Number 40. 5.75 metres is the length of just under three and a half Tom Cruises stacked on top of one another, but it's also the length of Rue de Grey, which is the shortest street in Paris. Number 41. 
The most narrow street in Paris was built in 1540 and it's called Rue de Chat Quipeche. It's literally under six feet wide, so tight squeeze, maybe not one to go to after the pastries. The meaning of life. Paris has a number of well-known hills, although one of the highest is Montmartre Hill, which is 130 meters high. God, my legs ache just hearing that. Number 43. If you want to visit Paris, but can't go for any kind of legal restriction or whatever, or if you just want to feel like your own Paris, you can sort of do that by playing the Paris edition of Monopoly, which is a thing that does exist. There it is there. Lovely. Deal with it. Okay, move on. Number 44. Avenue Foch is the widest street in Paris and is around 120 metres wide. This is the perfect place to bring my whole clique of friends. <laughs> I don't have that many actually, but you know, if you want to be mine, why not give us a like and subscribe? So, then you can come to Paris with me. I won't pay though. Number 45. In the 10th arrondissement, you can find the smallest house in Paris, which is 5 metres high and 1.2 metres wide. In London, that would cost 500k a month, honestly. Tom Cruise might want it though. Number 46. Paris is expected to host the Olympics in 2024, by the way, so start saving if you missed out on Tokyo 2020. Hopefully there won't be a pandemic then, because... <laughs> oh, please, it needs to end. Number 47. Paris aims to host the most sustainable game so far by aligning its sustainability strategy with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Good luck with that one, gang. Number 48. Based on annual reports regarding crime, Paris is a median threat level location. This means that violent crimes are relatively uncommon, but street crime is. Maybe all their police services like Inspector Clouseau. That's the only explanation I can think of. Number 49. One of the most popular crimes in Paris is pickpocketing, so you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, pickpockets are all over this town. Oh no, wait, that's a Christmas song, isn't it? Number 50. Just thought I'd get this out of the way now, the official language in Paris is French. Thanks, bye. Number 51. The Tour de France is the most prestigious and difficult bicycle race in the world. Now, why would I bring that up? Well, the finish line for the race is in Paris. Number 52. One of the most popular locations within the wall walls of Paris, I guess, is the Louvre Museum, which is the biggest art museum in the world, covering 780,000 square feet. Number 53. The Louvre Museum opened in 1793, and due to its huge collections, it would take you around 200 days to see all of the 35,000 works of art on display, if you took only 30 seconds at each piece. Number 54. The Louvre painting collection is one of the richest in the world that includes classics like Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, The Raft of the Medusa by Theodore Jericho, The Wedding at Cana by Veronese. Uh, is that me? Did you guys do that? Just always there. Number 55. Speaking of the Mona Lisa, did you know that Napoleon Bonaparte slept with Mona Lisa? By which I mean he had the painting hung in his bedroom. I don't know what you're thinking about there, you filth bag. Number 56. The Louvre tends to get close to 10 million visitors a year. That's basically the same as the whole population of Portugal visiting the Louvre. I mean that as a simile, by the way, because that would be unmanageable if that was true. Number 57. The Louvre Pyramid is a large glass and metal pyramid designed by Chinese-American architect Eo Ming Pei. That's right, not a French architect. <laughs> yeah, I know. Number 58. You probably didn't know that there's more than one Louvre around the world. There is the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which looks ravishing. I must have you. It opened in 2017. There's also another Louvre in the north of France too, which opened in 2012. Another mystery solved, Scoob. Number 59. There are actually five pyramids in the Louvre, not just this fancy glass one that gets all the attention. Doesn't seem to share it with any other ones, does it? Bit greedy, this guy. Sorry, I got all worked up there, but I hate spoilt pyramids. I tried to say you shouldn't throw stones in glass houses, but, you know, needs to share more, right? Yeah. Number 60. The Louvre wasn't known as the Louvre when it first opened. Originally, it was called the Museum to Art. Later on, Emperor Napoleon named it after himself. What a big head calling it Musée Napoleon. Isn't that modest? After that, it was given its present name, the Louvre. Number 61. The Mona Lisa isn't as big as people think. The actual painting is only slightly bigger than an A2 piece of paper, as it measures just 30 inches by 21. There's a joke I could make there, but I'm gonna leave it. See if you can work it out. Number 62. Here's the thing though, Mona Lisa is not the name of the woman in the painting. The woman is thought to be Lisa Gerardini, whose husband commissioned the work around 1503. That's why the painting is called Mona Lisa, because it roughly translates into My Lady Lisa. Number 63. We know there are many popular sculptures within the Louvre, but did you know one of those popular sculptures doesn't even look finished? It's the Winged Victory of Samothrace, which can be viewed in the Louvre at the top of a staircase, and it doesn't have a head. Nintendo 64. 
Napoleon commissioned the construction of what we now know as the Arc de Triomphe, but he didn't live to see the completed Arc, as there were a number of delays during development. The Arc de Triomphe was completed in 1836, but he died in 1821. Number 65. The walls of the Ark list the names of 558 French generals and the major battles of the Napoleonic Wars. I wouldn't be surprised if Napoleon put his own name up there, and more than once too, to make up for little, you know what I mean, he's a short guy. Number 66. At the base of the Arc de Triomphe stands a torch. Every evening at 6.30pm, the torch at the base of the Arc de Triomphe is rekindled to honour the sacrifice of the unknown soldier in World War I. So if you are in Paris and see a little random fire in the middle of the night, that's why. Oh, and there's also a power cut, apparently. Number 67. But how can we talk about Paris without talking about the Eiffel Tower? It's visited by 7 million people every day. Every day? No, sorry, a year. <laughs> Otherwise, that'd be mad, like the Portugal thing all over again that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> what am I like? Number 68. The Eiffel Tower is named after Gustave Eiffel, which sounds like a joke, but it isn't. He created this tower, although not on his own. He had Maurice Coechlin and Emile Nugier, as well as architect Stephen Silvestre, on board to help out. But their names aren't on the tower now, are they? Number 69. I found a tower. The Eiffel Tower was built to be one of the main attractions at the Paris World Fair in 1889 and was meant to commemorate 100 years since the French Revolution. But all of that context has rather changed now, huh? Number 70. It took two years, two months, and five days to build the Eiffel Tower, which is about the same time it took for me to build my rock hard abs. Sorry, this video is voiceover only. You can't see them. Number 71. Did you know it's illegal to take commercial pictures of the Eiffel Tower at night? I'm not sure how you'd police that, but it's to do with copyright issues surrounding the lights on the Eiffel Tower, which obviously aren't on during the day. Number 72. The Eiffel Tower is around 300 meters high, but 324 meters high if you're measuring up to the tip. I've said that before. Number 73. The Eiffel Tower can only hold 5,000 people at a time. This is around identical to the size of an average concert venue, I guess. So visualize that, but scattered around number, so vertically. Number 74. A woman once married the Eiffel Tower in 2008. So sorry, everyone, but this thing right here, it's taken. Number 75. From a woman who tried to marry the tower to a dick of a man who tried to have it destroyed, Adolf Hitler. Yes, he wanted to blow it up and have it demolished as a show of strength, but he was talked down from this plan. Number 76. What you may not know is that the Eiffel Tower is not the most visited monument in Paris, nor is the Louvre. Oh no, it's actually the Notre Dame Cathedral. Number 77. The Notre Dame Cathedral was constructed between the 12th and 14th centuries and was built upon the ruins of two earlier churches. So it's recycling, kind of, in a way, ish, isn't it? Number 78. In 2019, the Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire and led to the 850-year-old building spire and roof collapsing. Luckily, it's all fine now, though, and it wasn't completely destroyed. No word on whether or not that hunchback's okay, though. Number 79. Did you know you can turn bells into balls? Well, the French did. From 1791 to 92, all the bells of the Notre Dame, except the 1681 Bourdon called Emmanuel, were torn down and melted to make cannonballs. Number 80. The largest organ in France has almost 8,000 pipes and can be found in the Notre Dame Cathedral, just in case you want to test your hearing in the most extreme way possible. Number 81. Time to tackle some myths. The two towers in Notre Dame Cathedral are presumed to be identical, but they're actually a little bit different. The North Tower, for example, is a bit bigger than the South one. Number 82. Some people believe that the gargoyles on the Notre Dame Cathedral are there for decoration, but they're not. The gargoyles actually protect the building from temperamental weather by preventing water from dripping too close to the walls. So by diverting the water that runs down the roof, it protects the stone walls from damage caused by excessive runoff. Number 83. One of the most famous sculptures in the world is in the Rodin Museum in Paris. Can you guess what it is? Hmm, have a think. You're close. Just guess, come on, guess. Okay, if you haven't figured it out, it's the thinker. See, you were close because you were thinking about it. Number 84. Funnily enough, The Thinker wasn't originally called The Thinker. Rodin first named it The Poet after it was presumed to be part of a bigger piece, The Gates of Hell. He then changed the name to The Thinker to allow it to exist as a separate piece. Number 85. The Rodin Museum opened in Paris in 1919 and is dedicated to the works of the French sculptor Auguste Rodin, who unfortunately didn't live to see the museum open. Number 86. Did you know that without Paris, we wouldn't have Hermione Granger? Because Emma Watson was born there. That, that's how that works, right? Uh, uh, hmm. Number 87. Hey, while we're at it, another popular figure who was born in Paris is Jade Jagger, daughter of Mick. 
Number 88. James Bond star, who we're mentioning mainly for SEO purposes because no time dies out soon, Eva Green, is another Paris-born celeb too. That's it though, there are absolutely no other Paris-born celebrities whatsoever. Number 89. Well, okay, that is apart from N'Golo Kante. For all those who aren't football fanatics, Kante is a Paris-born celeb known for his five-star football abilities that he's been known to show off while playing for both Chelsea and France. Number 90. Oh, by the way, Paris has a football or soccer team, Paris Saint-Germain FC, which was founded in 1970. Number 91. And as a football team, it does pretty well too. Paris Saint-Germain FC is also France's most successful team with over 40 trophies. Well done, lads. You coup those ballets. Number 92. Paris also has tramway lines serving the perimeter of the city. Now, you'd think that'd be great to see the sights, but unfortunately, it only operates on the outskirts, so actually, it's not really. So tourists don't tend to use it very much. Number 93. The trams in Paris completely disappeared in 1957 as there was access to more cars. Despite this, it returned in 1992, since it's a means of transport that doesn't produce fumes and is inexpensive to build, apparently. Number 94. The first tram line in Paris opened during the 1850s. I'm sure their legs appreciated the change. No more walking about. Number 95. It wasn't a great respite for our four-legged friends who we ride on, though, because trams in Paris were originally horse-powered. As in, powered by horses. Nothing to do with horsepower. Well, I suppose it is, actually. Number 96. Other than the metro, Paris also has the Transilien, which is what the suburban and regional trains are called. Choo-choo indeed. Number 97. There's a faster railway system than the metro in Paris too, called the RER, which is known as the Suburban Express Railway. Number 98. Since the RER has fewer stops than the metro, you can actually cross Paris on it in 15 minutes. Number 99. In 2005, Tom Cruise wanted to become an honorary citizen of the city of Paris, but the government blocked that move because of his affiliation with Scientology. So sorry Tom, but looks like that's an impossible mission for you now. Number 100. In 1994, it took three hours to get from Paris to London, but now it only takes two hours and 16 minutes. On the trains, I mean. If you're swimming, it will take way longer than that. Number Finally, Paris has a pizza restaurant called Pazzi. Big deal, right? Well, this is a big deal, actually, because the pizza there is served by robots. Well, I say that, it's a series of like little arms, like in a car factory, but still, not human. So that was 101 Facts About Paris. Have you ever been? Are you from there, perhaps? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, please do like this video. It really does help us out a fair bit. And subscribe, too, because that helps us out even more. Become part of the Mother Factor team right now. In the meantime, though, hark. Look at these two videos on screen right now. You're going to really enjoy. Trust me on that one, and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Or should I say, au revoir.